Hello and welcome to part two of episode four. In this episode, we'll be continuing our conversation where we left off last week. How can we create opportunities for ourselves while pursuing our passions? Bargab and I, we were talking about his experience creating his club at UBC called UBC Thunderbikes. If you're interested in learning more, make sure to check out the previous episode. But we were talking about creating a passion project, starting from the passion itself. And in this week, we're going to be talking about how those passion projects led to his career opportunities. So I hope if you're a young entering professional, you find some inspiration from this video. I know it can be really discouraging when job descriptions say you need a certain number of years of experience, but maybe you can land your first internship by talking about your passion projects. So we'll be diving deeper into that. And with that being said, let's hop right into this episode. Well, like different approaches to uh, landing a job or like getting employment. One of the most popular things nowadays is applying to job boards that seem like they um, match your qualifications and interests. And that is a great place to start. The one thing that we need to be aware of, though, is a lot of times the people hiring don't have the time to read through everyone that applies. And there are usually a lot of applicants for these online job boards because it's so easy to apply. Hmm. I don't know if I want to coin this term, but like, it kind of Go seems like, it. It, like it's like battling for like who's lazier between the two like individuals, like either the people hiring or the people applying for the jobs. Because a lot of times uh, people applying for the jobs, like reuse their resume, they send out the same resume to a bunch of different employers and the cover letter is modified so that uh, the name is redacted with a new name. Like it's, it's very simple, minor changes. But like one thing that um, I would highly recommend is a lot of companies, since they also are like playing the laziness game and like they also um, want to minimize the amount of work that they do in their hiring, they have programs that run through uh, your cover letter and your resume to highlight some of the key fact, like key things that they uh, wrote in the job description. And the ones that fit the job description the best are the ones that get looked at by an actual person. So it's really important when you're applying for these jobs um, to like really read the job description and make sure that it's tailored to uh, your applications. Your resume should not be the same for like two different positions in two different industries. It should be tailored to specifically what the job description says. And I would like highly recommend like copy and pasting some of the job description and then rewriting it in your own words for like how you can relate to that experience. I, I worked at a company, I won't name which one, but um, I was working pretty closely with one of the HR interns and she told me that they only spend maybe a minute max sifting through both the cover letter and the resume. So you might be spending like two, three hours writing it and it might be amazing, but if it doesn't necessarily like meet what they're looking for, then it's like discarded or if they don't see the keyword that they want, then it's discarded. I think that leads us to another point is that maybe trying to reach out to the recruiter in a different angle. I think we both have stories to, to speak on that. Well, of course, there are a couple of jobs that um, like I see on a job board that like I think fit me very well. But usually what I do is I try to find companies that are, are of interest that share similar values or doing what I would like to do, mainly in like sustainable transportation. And I try to reach out to them personally and see if there's anything I can do to be a part of that organization. How I do my job search, the first thing is like, it's important to make yourself appealing to the company by relating uh, your story to, to theirs. And I think that's kind of what the whole design team and like personal projects is about. Like for example, sustainable transportation, the industry is quite new and it's quite novel. Um, there's not a whole lot of engineers that have been formally trained with working on EVs or um, hybrid technology. So by making yourself one of those individuals that has done personal projects on either of those vehicles, um, it makes you really appealing for an organization to hire you. And that's kind of how I start. Like I share my story. I present that I started this uh, UBC Thunderbikes team and I share how like this is relevant to the current work that they're doing. Then I ask if there's any possible positions open for me to join their organization. It's not usually like I look for an opening to, to form, but I try to create my own opportunities. In the first video, I mentioned that I worked for Evil Car Share, um, but I never actually mentioned how I got the job. I did a case competition 
and we were presenting our solutions to a bunch of marketing managers from Evo. I really wanted to learn more from the company. I thought the concept of car sharing was just so fascinating and I thought there was so much I could learn from. And so I sent an email through the <laughs> Evo car share website, literally like info at evo.ca email. And I was expressing my interest working for the company. I name dropped the marketing manager that I directly presented to because I didn't know how to reach her. The team kindly forwarded her the email and she came back and reached out to me and she connected me to the hiring manager. And so wow. I, I was in my first year and then she invited me in for an interview and I was so scared because in first year you literally know nothing. Even now, I still don't know very much, but no, a little bit more than first year. She gave me a role to be a successor of someone that was gonna leave. He actually created that job himself. So I was taking on a role that was not fully developed yet. So I had a lot of room to grow in it and to mold this role. I highly recommend if you have a passion for a company, learning more about them, doing research on them, and then emailing them directly and sharing your findings. So our main focus of today was like creating new opportunities with our mm. passions. So any any final words before we wrap up here? Technology and like the way our economy is running is changing very rapidly. And it's, it's difficult to prepare for that the same way we prepared for things a couple decades ago where you go to school, you get a degree, and then uh, you look for employment. Um, things are changing. Degree inflation is on the rise. And also um, even, even with degrees, it's, it's at times difficult to get a job. And I think the big focus now should be finding an area of interest that is fulfilling to you, but is also meeting the needs of the public and really pursuing that interest to make that a career. So for example, like sustainable transportation and electric vehicles are, are on the rise since I started at UBC. Like that was a promising field and that was of interest to me. I decided to pursue it and form a design team and also continue pursuing that as a career after, after I graduate. I'm not saying everyone should follow that specific path, but like really identify like what's a really promising industry to be in right now, uh, whether that be in like machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, blockchain, cryptocurrency, or anything that is of interest to you. And find a way to do some personal projects to pursue that further that could lead to either employment or starting your own startup to like pursue those endeavors. Look for employment nowadays is changing and we have to adapt to that. And I think this is one way to do that. To build on that, not everyone's going to know exactly what their point of interest is in the mm. beginning. So I would highly recommend just pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and trying things because it's so much easier to try something and then rule out something that you don't like to do rather than, you know, just sitting and thinking about what you might be interested in without actually like getting your hands dirty. If you're in younger years, like I highly recommend joining more clubs, like perhaps checking out the design team. Um, Music and underbikes is hiring. <laughs> for, for second years, third years, all years. I am I I'm not actually sure I'm not on UBC Thunderbikes anymore, but um, we're always looking for eager memories. So even if we don't have an active recruitment post, reach out to thunderbikesdesign at gmail.com and see if there's any opportunities. If you are eager enough and if you are motivated enough, if you show that you are the right fit for the organization, they'd always be willing to accommodate you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and don't think that you have to be good at something already in order to join a club. Like for me, when I did the case competition, that was my first time ever doing a case competition. And mm -hmm. the odds, you know, ended up being in my favor. But at the same time, like you don't have to be good at something to try something. So thank you so much for listening. And thank you so much for joining this uh, episode, Vargas.